everyone, I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. Today, we'll see a team that can get it done on the ground. The Giants are top 10 in rushing TDs, and they'll go up against the Seahawks team that wants to keep the running game in check. Thank you, Larry. Coming to you from just off the New Jersey Turnpike in East Rutherford, we are just about set for football on EA Sports from MetLife Stadium. This crowd a few minutes ago stirred into action at the sight of their men in blue emerging from the MetLife tunnels. We're set to go as the Giants get ready to match up with the Seattle Seahawks. He dumps him for a loss of eight. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. On second down, Webb. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. Cliff Averill in there to get him and this pass rush strong now that sacks on back-to-back -back plays what will webb try to do here after the sack as he brings his guys up third and long taken down but not before he reaches the 38 it's a big play for the Giants on third down 53 yards so here we go first and 10 now out of the gun it's Webb a dump off to the flat for Perkins and I think the ball's out but this will fortunately wind up out of bounds and I have to admit, partner, that I've often thought that I don't like this rule where the offensive player fumbles the ball, it goes out of bounds, and they get to keep it. <laughs> that's just because you're a defensive guy. That's why you don't like it. Yeah, you're right. It is a slanted view, isn't it? But that's this is where, for the offensive team, the sideline is their friend. Usually it's not their friend. Yeah, exactly right. I actually played for a guy in college. You know what he used to name the sideline? Sammy. Sammy sideline and use him well. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Shipped together here from the D-line. They run with a fifth-round man, Paul Perkins. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Now Perkins. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him five yards there, and it'll bring up second down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. To throw on second down, here's Webb. It's caught, back up. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. Well, still in search of the first down after that last completion. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll try to pick it up with Perkins. And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Let's go! 
So the chains are on their sides. It's first and goal from... And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Paul Perkins, his ninth touchdown of the season. And the Giants take it right down and score on the opening drive. And they will line up now for the two-point try. Here we go now. To throw Webb. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, they had that great, long, methodical drive to put it in the end zone. Then they tried to bite off a little more and get eight points. Instead, they're sitting at six. But didn't that feel like a decision that they made on Tuesday. Yeah. You well, know, you usually say the that's what they do, right? Right. That, that's the best one. The best ones do that. They take the emotion out of it. That felt like that was scripted. Hey, if we score in the opening drive, we're going to go for two and try and really gain an advantage. Play fake here on first down. And the giant rush gets home as down he goes. Jason Pierre-Paul in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Thomas Rawls with his first care. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. And well, the defense searches for one more stop here after the run on second down. Defense really showing respect to the deep ball here, playing off the receivers. It's Wilson. He finds his man, Baldwin. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. That goes for a gain of 31. I don't care how many times you tell the story, it never loses its luster for me. Doug Baldwin, undrafted, out of Stanford, and plays like a number one receiver should in the NFL. I don't care how you cover him. I don't care that his size isn't great. He's the one that typically comes up with the football. Absolutely. His roots go all the way back to Gulf Breeze, Florida, where he's from right on the water near Pensacola. And then, of course, to Stanford. And, boy, he's been good. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. I know we just saw a nice throwing catch, but how about the big guys up front yeah, buying that time. time? Yeah, that's exactly what they did. They created time and allowed the space to happen, and it turned into a really nice play. First down, this is Rawls. And he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. It's caught. Lock it. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Wilson to lock it there for the Seahawk first down. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? No gain there on the completion. Second and ten. Well, the stats that matter on this play don't help a team very much, unless, of course, you're playing defense. If you're getting points per reception, you got a reception, but yeah. no yardage. Great job by the defense, though. They, they read through that one. And he's going to go down here. 
a sack. They push him back to the 34. B.J. Goodson in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two. They're in the midst of a nice drive, but facing a third and long here. And the offense now will try to regroup after the sack on second down. And here's Wilson throwing on third and long. And he's got Lockett. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Tyler Lockett, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Seahawks are now just an extra point away from moving out in front. And he'll bang that one through. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Isaiah McKenzie now on the return. And he will be marked down right there at the 20-yard line. A reminder later tonight, a game some folks have had circled on their calendars since the schedule came out in April. That's the Super Bowl rematch. Falcons, Charles, at Foxborough to take on the Patriots. Super Bowl 51 and a half, anyone? <laughs> then on Monday night, that's no slouch either. An NFC East battle between the Redskins and the Eagles. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and it'll be second and very short. Now, that was an excellent run, and when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on the Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they bring this one back. It's a fumble recovery and a Seattle touchdown. And give some kudos to the defensive coordinator, I think, here. They bring the blitz, they dial it up, and it turns into six points for them. It's so nice to hear you actually give kudos to the defense. It is so nice. You're such an offensive guy like that. I love it. He dialed things up, and boy, a big play resulted for his guys. Well, you like the credit to the defense there, right, my friend? Yeah, you do, do I ever. This is taken at his four. <laughs> And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. And the Giants ready to come out now. And that last possession, really a gut punch. You seemingly had it working. You were in the midst of a very strong drive. Then suddenly the fumble, and you're watching the back of a defender's jersey as he brings it all the way in the other direction. There's not much more I can add to that. I thought you summarized it perfectly, partner. you just got to regroup and start putting another drive together. That's all you can do. And that's complete to Marshall on the crossing route. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 15 yards there for number 15. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. Here we go now. On second down, Perkins. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. He's fumbled already once, Charles. I'm not going to say that that was in his mind there, but I'm sure that during some of these plays, he is mindful of it. And once you fumble the ball, you know what your team tells you and your coaching staff? Take care of it. Rest of the game. And that does get in your mind a little bit, and sometimes that slows down your effort in trying to get free from tacklers. And the defenders know it, too. They sniff that out, don't they? Everybody wants to swarm the football. You know the rule is, first guy hold up the runner, Everyone else try and get there and strip the ball free. Now a first down throw. Webb. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Basically, you're not going to outwork two guys very often. Double coverage. I thought he was going to go somewhere else with the football. I get it. That's a stud wide receiver. You want to try to get him the football. Yeah, sometimes you rely on him a bit too much. You forget the other options that are out there. run. It's 
Alex Perkins. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try to defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The Giants on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and seven. Now Webb. A screen here to Vereen. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Now the screen only good for three that time, and it'll bring up a fourth down. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice, an ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. They go play action here on first down. Looking for Baldwin. Intercepted. Picked off by Dominique Rogers cromartie And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. Detroit! Detroit! They'll let Perkins carry to start the drive. And some room to roam now. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Looking to throw on second down. Webb. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. The Giants on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and four. Webb now from the gun. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Let's phrase this delicately, okay? Might have had a better option instead of throwing the football into double coverage. He was blanketed. I was surprised that he went his direction. Yeah, should have thought maybe about the check down. Take the completion. Keep moving. Only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted spotted at the 14-yard line. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, you get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. Fresh set of downs here. Wilson now off the bootleg. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Give him eight on the play, and it'll make it a second down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guy who's playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. gun on third down Wilson he'll rifle this one and that's caught inside the 35 and he takes this one down all the way near the 30 
And that goes as a gain of 37 on third down. And nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away. But it does get away and it's second down. Second down now after the incompletion. Wilson again to Rawls. And able to push his way four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. But when this ball's tipped and intercepted... Picked by Darian Thompson. And nothing there on the return. They've got the football, but they'll have to start this drive at their own four-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. From deep in their own territory, they look to throw. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Well, one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Throwing again on second and ten. Webb. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they had incompletions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. It's caught. Shepard. Yeah, he will get the first down as he's up to the 20-yard line. And that one good for 16, and the drive will continue. On first and 10, Webb. And he's got his rookie first-rounder. It's Evan Ingram. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. First down, Webb looking for his big receiver, Marshall. And that's caught at the 25. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. Now the offense lining up first and 10. from the gun. Webb. And he's got it. Touchdown, Giants. Brandon Marshall, his second touchdown on the season. And the Giants are a two-point conversion away from tying this football game. And they'll get set here looking for the two-point conversion. Here we go now. Here's Webb. Throw here is incomplete. So now, Charles, two touchdowns, two tries at two point conversions, and both fail. And you want to say, let's go ahead and run the kicker out there from now on. But the problem is you're chasing points yeah. at this stage. So now you've got to dial up more two point conversions and hope you're successful from here on out. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. 
I don't think any of us were surprised that they decided to start this drive on the ground after the last two drives ended in interceptions. Unfortunately, though, not a lot going on on that first play. Yeah, I think the anticipation was felt also by the defense. They go again with Rawls. And he will perhaps get back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. And time has run out on this first half. Teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's we'll see if they do just that. A fake to Rawls. Now it's Wilson. Throw left side complete. It's Richardson. Touchdown, Seattle! Paul Richardson, 83 yards, and the Seahawks add on to their lead. And Charles, I had an offensive coordinator tell me one time that they designed every play to score. I don't know how true that is, but he had to run a long way after that catch. Heck of a play. I think that when he was telling you that, he was designing run after catch in every play. <laughs> I mean, that's the only way to put it in there, and that's what we got on that one. Nice catch, an even better run for big yardage. This is taken at the three. Here's the Giants offense now getting set to start the third quarter. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They run with Perkins. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. When the 4-3 defense is functioning really well, you know who stays what we call clean and no one gets to him? The guy playing the middle linebacker position. The guy we call Mike. That means the defensive front has eaten up all the blocks and just let him go. And Vereen, sure-handed as he is, he lost the football. And this is going to get out of bounds, so they will gain a bit of yardage on the play, actually, and they'll hold on to the football as well. The Giants on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and six. From the gun, Webb. He finds back and complete. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. So the offense has it first and 10. And they'll toss it out to Perkins. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll, in fact, tackle him behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And it'll be second and 12. Webb. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. The 15 yards there on the catch and run. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback who has to slide and find open space to throw. 
And some options here for the offense on second and two. Here we go now. Now Webb. And they're going to get him. He's sacked back around the 28. Michael Wilhoy coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. The Giants on third down. They've been very good. Five for seven thus far. This is third and nine. Operating from the gun. Webb. And he's going to go down again. Cliff Averill in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. Now a chance to take advantage of that missed field goal. First and 10, way up at the 37. Off the play fake to Rawls. Wilson. And this is caught. A spectacular one-handed grab there. A good pick up there of 20 yards. It's got to the point where we see guys like that make that type of a catch. Not fair goes through my brain. That size, that speed, and now they're acting like wide receivers, too. Uh, yeah, tight end one-handed cat catches nowadays. Just not right. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. To say they've kept him under wraps running the football, that, that's an understatement. He's been completely neutralized. Yeah, they've essentially taken him out of the game, haven't they? And you know all the teams say, we're not going to let him beat us? Well, that's exactly what's happened here. They've whipped up to that. It's already second and 12. The defense hoping to push him back more. Now Wilson. It's complete on the bubble screen. That's Richardson. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. little surprise here on third and one. He can run for it, and he will. And he slides to avoid the hit. Back-to-back 11-yard -back gains, and they've got another first down. Now that run, that's exactly why you stay with the running game. You don't abandon it totally. You stick with it, keep telling your guys to stay motivated, and they found a crease on that play. First down, Wilson. And it's caught. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Paul Richardson with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. So they're going to go for two. From the gun, it's Wilson. His pass caught at the four. And he will get into the end zone to extend the lead by two more. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded at the two. And they're going to stop him short of the 20 with a penalty flag down. Now what's the call here? Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. Hey, hey, left, left, left. All right, here we go. On first down, it's Webb. And he'll find his man on the out route. That's Marshall. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 
He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. On first and 10, Webb. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Cam Chancellor in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. Welcome back now here in East Rutherford. It's the Giants with possession of the football but needing points as we start quarter number four. To throw on second down, here's Webb. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Michael Bannon in there to drop him, and sacks on first and second downs are going to lead to a third and long. What will Webb try to do here after the sack as he brings his guys up third and long? Out of the gun, it's Webb. Looking for Shepard deep. And a shot taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Green, 39! Over, over! Over, over! Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Looking for his receiver, Sharp, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the Pro Bowl safety, Cam Chancellor. And his guys are going to take over at their own 48-yard line. Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. They are just putting things together so well here, drive after drive. They really have captured the momentum, haven't they? They've taken momentum and pretty much not just give them a jersey, but a seat on the bench as well. Whatever do you need, you've got it because the way they're stringing things together and creating that distance between them and their opponent, it's really hard to narrow that gap. And the other part is they're taking their spirit away from them, too. Yeah, now they're just looking to add to that total. So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. They stay on the ground. Rawls again. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave them with a third and about five. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. And the Seahawks on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This will be third and five. Pitch goes to Rawls. They find some open field here. Pass the 20. And all the way in. Touchdown. Seattle Thomas Rawls with touchdown number seven on the year and the interception by the Seahawks D leads to a touchdown and the lead is now 24 the kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away This is taken about seven yards deep. He spins free. And here comes the Giants offense back out onto the field. First throw now for the backup Manning. Throw left side, complete to Ingram. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is the future game. Can they get better and be ready for the next time? Hopefully with a chance to win. And the hit jarred it loose. 
It's incomplete. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Taking a shot here for Marshall, and that's caught inside the 35. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. That goes as a gain of 36 on third down. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. On first and 10, here's Manning. He's going to launch this thing way down, and he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Rhett Ellison, his second touchdown on the season, and the Giants are able to cut into this lead. And they will line up now for the two-point try. A toss running left. That's Perkins. And he is going to be stopped short of the goal line. Oh, they'll mark him inside the one. He just couldn't keep churning those extra few inches. And the two-point attempt is turned aside. And the Seahawks looks like they've recovered. They have. Now they're down big here in the fourth. They had to try the onside kick. Can't fault them for the effort at least. No, you can't at all. And if nothing else, now you've put something that you're trying to practice, right, that you, you've worked on into a game situation, and now you can go back and dissect it. So if you need it again sometime, maybe you'll find a better way to do it. But, yeah, this game's pretty much done for them. The tenth carry for Thomas Rawls. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audible there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. The Seahawks on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is third and eight. Oh, design run for their wide out. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time, because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. And this is good. It was running out of gas there at the end, but he winds up getting just enough on it. And that will extend their lead even further. So it's three more points, and that widens things out even further here in the fourth. Hey, in this league, you can never have too much. So if you're in range, grab the three whenever you can. <laughs> in this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. yards shy of the 20 at the 18. The completion good for three and it's second down. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. And now the ball comes out. Manning lost it. On plays like this when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. On third and long, it's Manning. And he can't quite intercept it. Zone coverage, free safety was there. Couldn't come up with it, and now it's fourth down. 
He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously gotten smart, and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. Now Manning, got to have this one. He's going to sling this deep downfield, and this is going to be incomplete. The Giants go on fourth, but come up empty. And now, goodness, possession's going to go over right at the 10-yard line. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Second and goal, ball on the seven-yard line. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. Were you as surprised as I was that they actually ran it on second down there? I thought that they would go ahead and throw it in every situation here. Yeah, they've thrown for three touchdown passes. Now here, I think they probably go back to the air. Yeah, I think so, but ordinarily, second down is when you run your play fake, your play action, show run, and throw the ball. Now they brought up third down, they'll have to throw it anyway. This offense so far on third down, they've been very good. Five for seven thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. Rolls. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. This is an easy one, 23-yarder. And Walsh able to convert it as his kick is good. And that will extend the lead out to 24. So the drive takes him inside the 10, but it ends with just three. And a nice job defensively to rise up and make sure they didn't get in. And New York set to take the field. Let's just be frank. They're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> that's, that's all that's left because victory... Not a chance now. And I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because there are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now. And if they call plays they want executed, they need to do that and do it really well. Otherwise, there could be repercussions. We'll see how they handle the waning moments of this one. So here we go, first and ten now. Throwing now is Manning. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Let's face it. You can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. To throw is Manning. It's caught by OBJ. It'll be a gain of 16 and give him a first down as well. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because... Just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Mike Bennett getting him once again, his third sack of the afternoon. Manning the throw on second down. Looking for Marshall, but it's intercepted. It's the Pro Bowl quarterback, Richard Sherman. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game. 
game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. The Seahawks in victory formation as they go ahead and take the knee. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. The Seahawks on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third down and 12. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for the Seahawks, their good start continues as they get their record up to 4-2. and two. And they'll head back home next week to take on the Houston Texans. Meanwhile, for the Giants, things are definitely going south quickly as they fall now to 1-6. and six. And they'll get an extra week to think about it as the midseason bye might be coming at just the right time. So that'll just about do it for...